Hey everyone, I'm going to show some features of Fregato's engine. So we have here this new platform that I've made for Fregato, and it's this tilting platform, so when I walk on it, it tilts according to where Fregato is on the platform. But if I go over here on this side, we can see that there's some kind of a bug here where Fregato starts to fall through the platform uh, as, as it tilts further and further. So there must be some kind of a collision detection bug. And we're going to look at some features that Fregato's engine offers to help us debug things like this. So to start with, we press Control e to go into the editor. And once we're in the editor, we can see that the editor automatically puts this red line on top of the platform to show us the, the platform's collision detection area. So we can jump on this, and now we can see, and I'll just pause it here, that the red line is quite far out of sync of where it should be uh, to, uh, to be on the surface of the platform. So we want to debug why this is happening. So to begin with, we want to open the code for the platform. Uh, so I'm going to open it in, in my editor, which is gvim. And Fregato has a built-in editor, which works quite well. But today, I want to show off a new feature, which is how Fregato now has uh, support so that it can automatically uh, read what's happening in a, in a gvim session. It connects to, to gvim's uh, session and and continuously gets gvim's buffer so that if i if i type a command in here uh it'll instantly update without me even saving the file so what i want to do to start with is i'm really suspicious that uh that if we walk onto the platform uh we can see that kind of messed that up we can see that the right side of the red area is is not as far over as it should be so i'm really suspicious that this x value here for whatever reason is uh is lower than it should be so what i'm going to do and let's just uh go over here uh is i'm gonna i want to plot the x values of where the left and right side of the platform are so let's uh, put an expression in here to do the left side. And as soon as I, I type that, you'll see that this line came up over here showing us the left side. So I'm plotting the x value of the left side of the platform area. And then I'll do the same for the, uh, the right side of the platform area. Uh, and so, OK, and so that's the middle. And so uh, that is the, the right side of the platform area. and let's walk onto here and we see that what i said was correct uh and it is uh we can see that it's it's not far enough over so uh so we can see and and we'll go on this side and we can see that when we're on this side it, it comes too far in so we can see that there's something wrong with the uh the x value here now we can go changing our code over in our vim window uh, and then we can uh, then we can go back to the main Fregato window and we can we can jump on the platform and try it out. Uh, the problem one of the problems here is that when the platform is at rest, the bug is not exhibited. So we kind of have to get Fregato to interact with the platform uh, to show off the bug. So let's let's get rid of that difficulty to begin with. So we can see that uh, that here down here this is where angle equals uh, you know vars dot tilt angle and vars dot tilt angle is calculated. Uh, with some uh, some formula updates it up here, uh, depending on you know if if Fregato is standing on the platform. But for the purpose of this bug, we just want to remove all that complexity. So I'm just going to set the angle to be 45. So let's do that, and we can see as soon as I, I change the code, uh, the the platform is now uh, hard coded to be at 45 degrees, and we can see quite clearly here uh, what the problem is. So we can we can look at our code and. Uh, and we see here, this is the code that, that calculates the, the platform area. And we can see this sets the left side and this sets the right side. And I immediately become suspicious that these two are, uh, are not uh, really symmetric functions. And I'm thinking that the reason is that, uh, that we have 80 minus 80 times cos. And here we just have 160 times cos. Now the left side, which is over here, is calculated correctly, and the right side is incorrectly. So let's try to make this the uh, symmetric mirror of the other one. So that's at 160, uh, 80 plus 160, so let's change it to 80. And there, that looks correct. Uh, so now we have the red line, which looks like it's, it's where it really should be. So, uh, so let's, we can probably do away with these plots now. 
Uh, and let's uh, go back to uh, putting it with the vars.tilt angle and then let's see if this works. So we walk on it and it looks like we go on it. Uh, it looks like it works perfectly. So there we go. We can see that uh, we, with a more traditional approach, I would have had to exit the program and I would have to think a little bit and then I'd have to change the code and then I'd have to run it. And, uh, and it would probably take me five or six iterations of several minutes each and it might take me an hour to solve the problem. But like this, we can see that I could very easily solve the problem in just a few minutes. So now we're gonna, we're gonna show off another feature where here we have some, some coins. And we can see that these coins have this little little sparkle going on, uh, this, uh, this cool little particle effect. They, they sparkle every now and again. So let's open up the code to the coin. So we, uh, and this time I'll use the, the uh, building code editor. So I double click on this and it opens the gold coin and we can see we can, uh, Fregato's code is here, the gold coin, so I can, I can uh, switch between them easily and we can load any number of objects. Now, uh, now we wanna, we're interested in kind of playing with this particle system down here. Uh, so we see that this here is a definition of the object's particle system. And what it has is uh, it, uh, it, it spawns particles in an area around the object. We can see that min y, max y, min x and max x define a rectangle around the coin where randomly within that rectangle uh, particles will spawn. We can also have a spawn rate of, uh, of uh, 10, which is a, a constant that as it grows larger, there'll be more particles. Uh, and then we have how long the particles remain for. And then we have an animation which defines, uh, you know, an actual image and, and uh, where in that image the particles are. And I'll, I'll talk about that more in a minute. But let's firstly, uh, uh, sort of the most obvious thing to change is the spawn rate. So let's make these particles spawn much faster. I took that up to 100 and we can see that, uh, that they instantly start spawning much faster. And also I can use the slider so I can, you know, drag this over, I can drag it down, and I, I can use this to kind of look at uh, what, what's a nice desirable looking spawn rate. Uh, I, I can change it and I can see, see the results on the fly. Uh, I can likewise change uh, the, well, let's make this a little higher. I can change uh, the rectangle so I can make it so that, uh, you know, the, the particles spawn much lower. Um, so, uh, so we see they, they come down further on the object, or I can uh, sorry, that, that'll make them come higher because uh, uh, lower y is upwards. Uh, I can make uh, the max y so we can see that they're spawning over a much larger area. This could be combined with also taking the spawn rate up so we can see, and, and let's let's take the min x uh, should go down, and we can see that now they're spawning these particles in this really large area all around the coin. Uh, so it, it's really cool to be able to play with, with particle effects like this and see how they change in, in real time. Uh, we can also click on this animation and the game will automatically bring up this little animation editor which shows us this is the image uh, propsitems.png and within the image we have, have a rectangle which is defined here and, and that refers to this rectangle and then it has four frames and the game has a system where uh, you know the frames are automatically in, in a row. Uh, so so we, can, we can see how uh, uh, you know, how the animation works. We can get a preview of what it looks like here. And what we can do is we can actually edit this uh, by, by clicking here and it will actually change the code for us. So uh, we see that above it, it has in the same format another particle system which is, uh, which is exactly the same, uh, in exactly the same format, but uses a star. And we can change this and we can see already behind this, the, the thing has started showing stars instead of, instead of the sparkles. Uh, so we, we can see that uh, uh, we, we can use this to, to very nicely edit the, the in-game animations. We can also even, uh, you know, we, we can move these around and uh, we can, you know, make them, we could make this thing sparkle these coins instead. Uh, we can move that over uh, and, you know, now, now the sparkles are coming up as, as these coins, which is, which is kind of crazy, obviously, but, uh, but it's, it's just cool. You can do that kind of thing so easily. And as we can see, uh, when we change things over here, it automatically adjusts the code. So if I change the rectangle, we can see the rectangle over here is, is automatically changing. Uh, okay, so there's, there's one more just kind of uh, fun, fun feature I want to show off. Uh, so we're going to go over to another level, and this this feature, well, 
uh, kind of, th this idea comes from uh, one of our Brazilian developers, Marquevis, and uh, I changed the animation so we can see those crazy coins still uh, making the, the big coins. Uh, so here what we have are, uh, are some squirrels, and these squirrels, they throw nuts. And we, we can see the nuts coming down, so let's begin by me, let's pause the game, and we're getting hit here, so let's make us invincible. And that will make it so we cannot be hurt anymore. Uh, so nothing can hurt us and then we can we can do this in peace uh, and what we're gonna do here is uh, I'm gonna change the code to the squirrel so let's pause it so I can click on one of these guys uh, let's select him and what the squirrels do you see is they throw these little nuts at us and uh, and you know the nuts try to hit us and we try to avoid them uh, but you know what would be cooler is what if instead of throwing throwing the acorns, what if they threw copies of themselves? So I'm going to change that, and there's one more place where they spawn, so I'm going to change it to they throw black squirrels. Uh, and then uh, we've changed that, and we'll unpause the game, and we see that they start throwing copies of themselves. And then, of course, the copies throw more copies, and then more copies, and suddenly we have this kind of squirrel bomb where the, sc the screen completely fills up with squirrels. And, Let's uh, open the debugger and let's uh, see how many uh, objects we have in our level. We have 385, let's, and again, 416, and, and so on and so forth. The screen is still is soon overwhelmed with squirrels.